right. All right, guys, we're live. Hey, welcome, everybody. Welcome to another week, another Thursday night of The Good Life, where we're talking health, wealth, love, and happiness, uh, all the things that comprise a good life and how we can get better in those areas in order to live our best life, to live the life that we're designed to. So got my buddies here, Stu, that could be. What's up, hey, guys? Hey. All right, all right. And guys, uh, today what we're going to do is going to start off with a little self- uh, a little a little practice here right i'm gonna i'm gonna give you the phonetic all right now we're gonna say it all together with confidence <laughs> all right we're gonna say it all with confidence you guys ready let's do it say, so, be to be yeah yeah so the accent is over the eye like the eye yeah it's an accent igu over the eye there it is yeah, Stu and I took French together, and I say took very lightly because he crushed it, and I was in the back trying to make it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got the axe on the goo on lock. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you funny. guys are great, man. You guys are great. I'm excited to be here today. It's been a long week. Uh, I'm sure it's a long week for a lot of folks. Uh, we're going through COVID with all of this. A lot is changing, but I have some good news, fellas. I was walking by the Chase Center. As you know, I live in San Francisco. I was walking by the Chase Center, and uh, I saw that they were uh, starting to put the basketball hoops back up on the courts when they had taken it up. Yes. Yeah. So that is a great sign as to things improving, things changing. Um, so I'm very excited about that. What kind of changes are you guys seeing in your area before we get into our topic for today? First off, let's just talk about that, how much I've been fiending to play basketball. Like, absolutely. <laughs> like, it's just been the thing. So, right, for you guys, uh, this this will be a good conversation anyway. Like, that has been my, like, place of happiness, my place of flow, right? It's the basketball court. I remember going to therapy uh, a while back. And I was going through this like rough time, just always busy, just always like doing a bunch of stuff. And my therapist asked me something along the lines of like, what do you do for fun? Right. Like, what do you do just to like relax? And I was like, I don't really have much, but I love basketball. And she was like, oh, well, how was that? Yeah, no, right. Fun? <laughs> fun. Does that involve money? Fun. <laughs> That's this is a whole nother topic, right? Like I I've just learned a bunch of things about myself this past week that like I'm like adverse to some humor. Like I, I choose not to use humor in some in different areas because I'm like I'm like mm. too like stoic. I don't know. We maybe talk about that another time. But either way, basketball is like my place. So like when I wouldn't play basketball for weeks or months at a time, I would just get busy and overrun and just wouldn't be in that place. And like I needed basketball. Like I needed basketball to like keep me going. Whenever I'm on the court, it's like two hours, three hours, like the whole world could be right <laughs> blowing up and I wouldn't know anything. Um, so how desperate I am to play some basketball right now. So the fact that you brought that up could be, is a, is a good thing. There we go. Could be, could be. Could be. I'm going to be giving out cookies today. <laughs> Actually, I'll give, I'll give out, I'll give out watermelons. <laughs> Who are I prefer a gold star. Like gold Bob. star? All right, fine. We'll yeah. do that. We'll do that. Gold Thank you. Star. Thank you. I appreciate that special treatment. Um, <laughs> so, as you guys know, I live in crazy Florida. Um, so, Florida you know, for, for, yeah, Florida man. Florida man. Um, so, for us, like, you know, it's it's been progressively opening up for quite some time. Mm -hmm. So, it's, uh, it's interesting. I've been seeing a lot of memes. Like, uh, man, like, other countries have been closed like down here it's like it's like a different lifestyle you know going back and forth for me from uh florida to virginia i literally just flew back um down here to florida today actually and man the energy is so different like there's a lot more excitement in virginia now but like six months ago the energy was so off um so to me it's just it's nice to know that like my friends and family back home are like really starting to get into regular life again yeah, I mean, down here it really hasn't affected our schedule. I mean, we still, you know, go out to our to our own, you know, risk level and, you know, go exercise and, you know, be out and around people and 
um, it's certainly been like a controversial thing, especially for me having that night and day going from Virginia to here. And Virginia wasn't even the worst. So I won't even pretend, you know, like you know, places like New York, Boston, Chicago, some of those really big, colder cities all year round, they really got hit hard. So it's, I guess it's just nice to know that, you know, normality is coming back mm-hmm. to some degree. To some degree, yeah. Like, yeah. you know, who knows when we'll ever get fully back, if there is a fully back, if there is a normal, right? You keep We keep throwing out these words of like new normal and all this stuff, like, Mm-hmm. What 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 is what this going to go to? Yeah, right. What is normal? Like, what are what are what are we thinking is normal? <laughs> and are we setting ourselves up for failed expectations? Or right, you know what I mean? So it's a good question. Yeah. Uh, speaking of new normal, too. I mean, <clears throat> I I, I kind of wonder it, is going back to normal such a good thing? Right? Is is it really such a good thing for for a number of reasons? I've really been thinking about this quite a bit. Um, looking into into uh, if uh, not not trying to ruffle any feathers here, but looking into this. With a, Let's, Let's ruffle them. <laughs> Let's ruffle them. That's why we're here. Let's do it. What what quote are we unquote, here for? <laughs> quote unquote quote unquote great reset, and then this whole this whole dollar situation just continue until roo, 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 go down here and. Uh, Listen, uh, just just kind of steadying up and seeing and seeing what's going on, right? Um, a, a lot of a lot of talk. Um, I don't know, Chris, if you want to if you want to elaborate on this, or if you if you if not, obviously all good. But a lot of talk of you know uh, digital currency, cryptocurrency being kind of the move, and then you know the fiat system going down, da 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 da. So a lot of that stuff happening. I'm 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 kind of like a wait and see. In a wait and see sort of uh, sort of uh, attitude, because I have a hard time believing. Uh, in, in what? That uh, that I ladies and gentlemen week. is a flashback from our last episode where we talked about <laughs> whether or not we're planners or or, or wingers or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> right. I said, are you winging it? Well, there's certain aspects, right? Um, but. But what that looks like and what that looks like for your family, I have a hard time believing that, you know, people who have been benefiting from the fiat system and are at the top of it are really going to allow it to just like, you know, I, I just, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm uh, So not just that, but also a lot of changes coming in terms of how people interact. Would we, are we, are people ever going to be comfortable again, going in for hugs with strangers? You know, are we ever going to be, you know, uh, you know, I have a I have a wedding coming up, right? Are we or are, is it going to be a new thing now for big events to have like you know you know certificate of a vaccination or something like that to say are you safe, are you good? Um, I, I think a lot is going to change, and I'm just or has already changed, and I'm curious where where this you know when things open up, what things will look like in the area of health what things will look like in the area of finances and what things will look like in terms of how we interact with our loved ones and, and also strangers. Um, you know, it wasn't too long ago. If you, you know, if you dare sniffle or cough in public, good Lord. I, 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 it's, I it's, still, it's still that way though, isn't it? Like I, I've been out recently and I know that like someone has sneezed and multiple people have turned around. Like I, I still see it. I think that's one of those new normal things that like we're just on heightened alert for all this type of stuff now, you know? Yeah, heightened alert, well put. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to, to answer to answer that question uh, on the money side of things, the digital currency side, because you know, obviously it's important to stay on top of these things. It's why I pay attention to it so I can give you guys the information if you're not paying attention to it. Um, but absolutely, di- digital currency. So. Depends how deep we want to get into this thing. The blockchain, blockchain technology, right? That that technology, the blockchain will change everything about our lives. It'll change, it'll change everything. When you get to a place of this peer-to-peer, not encrypted, just like you can maneuver and move however you want without any friction or anything on top, that technology has the ability to change the world, right? It could absolutely change the world. Very similar to the internet, right? Because the internet 
for those of you that don't know, right? It's only been out for like, you know, what, 25 years or something like that? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because there's some people that were born and only know that the internet exists. Like 25 years ago, like we, no one was on the internet. We didn't have this ability. We couldn't be live on all these places at one time. Like all of that has changed. So blockchain has the ability to potentially do the same exact thing. And on top of the blockchain are these currencies. Right. Cryptocurrencies, what everyone knows, you know, back in probably 2016, 2017, there was this big boom of what they call ICOs. I don't know if you guys remember this at all, but ICOs were initial coin offerings where like just like a company mm. could, go, could do an IPO. Right. Where it's mm -hmm. initial public mm -hmm. offering back into like 2017, 2016, they were doing all these ICOs, initial coin offerings. That's how you got all these new little cryptocurrencies, little coins, altcoins is what they call them. Right. There's a lot of that going on. And now we're in 2021. It's kind of settled down a bit. There's always going to be some lower coins and some altcoins and things to kind of, you know, play around with. But we've kind of settled into understanding kind of how the cryptocurrency side works. Now that what you said could, could be. Could be. I got. I got always. <laughs> I I got always like raise my hand when I do it now. That's what the axe on they do. Do that every time. Do that every time. Every time, bro. Every yeah. time. So, <laughs> so like I was saying, could be. Uh, <laughs> to answer to answer that question, as far as like how this is going to be different, because what we're seeing with fiat currency is a hundred percent correct, right? Like that, the fiat side. Right. The, the value of the dollar may go down. Right. Not may like for sure will. And like we just don't know when all of this is going to turn. But just like you said, the people that are benefiting from this, the reason why blockchain is very far away for what most people think is because governments and the powers that be. Right. If you believe in that, however, we want to go down that path. Right. But yeah. the gov governments and the powers that be will not allow that. Because there would literally be nothing that would stop you or me from going to purchase bombs from somewhere else as just an individual. And that transaction cannot be, you know, it, it, it can't be uh, seen on, on the blockchain. You won't know who it went to. So literally the only thing that would hold our civilization together would be like war, it would be armies, it would be, right? Like, and governments knowing these types of things, knowing how big that is, they're not going to allow this to happen. If we think back about what just happened with, you know, Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg about to create his own coin with, a, with you know, Facebook has 1.1 billion users, not to mention they own WhatsApp and Instagram. If he created his own digital currency, he, Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, like that entity could potentially have more power than countries. That's why the government came in and was like, yeah, no, we can't, we can't have this happen. That's not gonna happen because they know how powerful that is. So all that being said, blockchain is definitely well, Chris, gonna I change. I thought we lived in a free market. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it to them. Don't do it to them. Exactly, right? Like we could go down that rabbit hole for, for some time. But again, understanding. Teaser. Teaser, teaser right? The powers yeah. that be. I don't think that they will allow it to happen without regulation, without, it's not going to be as free as people think. However, it does make sense if you are sitting on a lot of US currency to start to think about digital currency. Like all that being said, the governments might not want it to happen that all, you know, that quickly, but it's already happening, right? Companies are buying up tons of Bitcoin and right, Ethereum and now, you know, all the stuff that's happening. So there will be a change in the currency and how we use it, but I don't know how quickly that's going to be. And I don't know that things will go absolutely to nothing, if that makes yeah. sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, for me, like, you know, I, I'm not too familiar with all the different cryptocurrencies. I'm also not too familiar with um, managing my own uh, investments on like a day-to-day -day level. Like a lot of my mm -hmm. buddies are on Robinhood and stuff. Mm -hmm. For me, that's a down the road type deal. But when, when I think of Bitcoin, I think of like the horses that just got out of the stable. Like is the, like, is the powers that be, are, are they capable of pulling that back in? Or are they just saying like, okay, we, we, that one's gone. It's, it, it, we're not getting it. It's gone. Some of the other ones, I hear what you're saying. 
like you catch it early, like, you know, before it has all that momentum, all the people's money built into it. And what I think is really interesting of what's happening right now is I think we're witnessing how the Internet is both being used by powers that be to maintain regulation, both socially, financially, um, politically. Am I allowed to say that? Probably. That's how I you feel. And, you know, we're seeing all of that control. Because the internet has made it all of a sudden po- possible for group thinking to be way, way, way utilized and, and overplayed. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I don't know, where is, where's my live going? Did our live you, cut out on IG? No. Mine did. Uh, your, yours oh, on yeah. IG, anyways, but you're still so here So we're with seeing us. all that happening. Um, if you're able to invite me back, that'd be great. It could be um, for, for the IG live. Got you. Oops. Okay, cool. All right, perfect. All right, long story short. If we are, we're, we're seeing we're seeing that control, but what we're missing, like while we have the control going in one way, we mm-hmm. also have the. I'm hearing like a lot of like keyboard typing that's confusing me. Sorry, I'm not doing too good at winging this you right got, now. You, you got this, bro. You no, got appreciate it. There. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. A lot going on. Um, all right. Long story short, we're seeing how the internet is being utilized to maintain control and regulate. But at the same time, I see things like Bitcoin. I see things like the Robin Hood fiasco that like, happened like a couple weeks ago as instances where the internet is also trying to break free. So it's this really cool thing happening right now with the internet. Like, which way is it going to go? And it's going to um, go. I'll, I'll answer that question for you because I have a feeling it's going to go the other way. Like, it's going to, the internet is going to be less free over time. The internet, like, like the governments and the powers that be will eventually get to a place where they're controlling the internet, where they're limiting what's being seen, what you can do. That's that's what's going to happen. That's in my, in, in my opinion, in my opinion. I really agreed. believe it <laughs> and, and could be yeah. agree, could be <clears throat> agreed. So there seems to be a lot of evidence to that. Listen, listen, listen. Um, get, let me let me see if I can bring you know, a little bit of my, my experience to this a little bit. Um, so I, I, I was really early on um, blockchain and cryptocurrency. Mm-hmm. Um, I was super early. I was so early, people were like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. I was so early that I'm mad looking around at all these people buying all this stuff with all this, what I call fake growth, right? Mm-hmm. And I say that because I was, early on the white papers mm. right mm-hmm. i read those mm-hmm. okay the value of it and and you have to understand that cryptocurrency is different than blockchain right the value is the, the underlying technology is the blockchain for, i don't know right? this can we like elaborate on this for our viewers like the difference between the two yeah um and me i'm not an expert so i'm not going to pretend to be an expert um, however, what you what you should understand, and Chris, feel free to elaborate in a bit, but let me make my point here real quick. But there's an underlining technology of blockchain that exists, right? And on top of that, cryptocurrency was built. You can use blockchain to build anything, okay? So just understand that first, and then I'll make a point. And if you want to elaborate on the difference between the two, feel free. Um, but to me, as one of the early crazy ones right and and there was others that were that were crazier than me that brought me in right Mm -hmm. um as soon as institutions governments got involved to me the value is gone Mm -hmm. right because if you imagine blockchain being this or even um yeah it, it being this uh web right What's happening is they want, they've now like cut out different, cause they can't really control blockchain as a technology, right? They've now cut out different sections of it to regulate it, right? So what you're really looking at here is, again, the powers that be, right? Are, are going to find a way to wedge themselves in there. But the whole point in the beginning was to get away from them. Mm-hmm. So as soon as they started getting involved, that's what turned me off, right? And now, uh, of course, it turned me off because I was looking at it in terms of like, you know, what's the real value? And like, I'm one of those like, you know, in terms of like, yeah, this is, you know, revolutionary, you know, this is like, 
really cool in the sense of like everything, the problem is establishment. And if we're getting away from that by allowing this technology to, to, to do what it's supposed to do, free market, uh, that means that, that things that I care about, like for example, liberation of Africa has a chance. What I, what I, and that's a much, much deeper topic than anybody, right? Sure. Uh, play, uh, countries in Africa don't have a chance because the money supply is controlled by the already established West, Western um, institutions, right? And they use that to pull and puppeteer our, our, our politicians, right? To essentially make it so that they can go ahead and uh, essentially buy our raw materials for dirt cheap by putting our countries in debt. Now you can fact check me here. Uh, Confessions of an economic hitman. You know I always got a book for you. There we always go. got a book for you. Confessions of an economic hitman. Check my work, right? So I saw this. You know, being I always grew up thinking, man, like, what's like how I care about seeing my people, right, have a chance to actually utilize what we have that the world needs, which is all the natural resources that we feed to the rest of the world. But see, they use the, the, these uh, uh, fiat-based system because they control the money supply in debt third world countries and puppeteer them so that they can then be allowed to get our natural resources for dirt cheap, right? Mm -hmm. Liberation of Africa it is not good for first world countries, period. It's not good for first world countries. Why? Because when because when that starts going on and we start actually controlling our own natural resources, things get real tricky for first world countries that don't actually produce. That's right? right? That's they right. just consume. And if, in fact, when you look at the US as of now and they're coming out of this pandemic, they're not producing anything. Right. We're just consuming. And if you look at, if you don't believe me, look at these uh, the, 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 the trade um, difference. Look at how many containers that bring goods to the US and how many empty containers go back, mm. right? So again, confession of an economic hitman, look that up, check my work. But to me, that's what was exciting. I was like, oh shoot, 3G at that time, I had an uh, intern at Qualcomm and uh, there was the idea of 3G being spread into countries uh, of, of, uh, in Africa and uh, um, that that is all really they need, right? Mm -hmm. To utilize blockchain and, and thus get over this hump of like multiple different currencies and also being in debt, blah, blah, blah. so making trade a lot more smooth and, and, and standardizing things. It was actually moving, that's where it was the biggest. That's where I saw the real <laughs> hope being, right? Not like, oh, some kid in LA getting rich so he could buy a Lambo. Right. I didn't care about that. All I cared about, well, what's the value for the rest of the world and giving third world, so-called third world countries an opportunity to actually play on this stage, mm. right? And as soon as those that control fiat systems, money supply, realize what was going on and hopped in, to me, I, I was like, game's over, right? I may be wrong, I hope I'm wrong, but that was my hope for it, right? I also was working at, um, uh, 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 you know, maybe let me not put it all out there, but I was working at a financial, um, uh, a, a financial tech firm, mm. to put it that way. And I saw, you know, the rise of Robinhood during that mm. time. Mm. Um, what happened recently with Robinhood didn't surprise me at all, right? Because they put up this facade of like, we fought it, man, get out of here, you know, for no people. What people? What people? Mm -hmm. What people are you for? Because mm -hmm. the question I have for you, Robin, is who pays you? Mm -hmm. Where do you get your bread? Because if you don't tell me where you get your bread and I'll tell you who controls you. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so you the don't money, get your like bread you from say. the people. <laughs> if you don't get your bread from the people, how are you going to tell me you for the people? Because as soon as your bread dries up, what do you do? You got to go, <laughs> go back to the master. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I think it's if we, we 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 this is what I'm telling um I'm telling folks here is like listen I don't I'm no I'm no expert here I'm just common sense street dude bro I got my masters in the street <laughs> I look at it right I look at the situation and I use my common God given sense to piece together what's going on and mm -hmm. to me it's clear for something like crypto right in and of itself 
is also fiat. What backs it up? There's no yeah. gold. Right. There's no nothing. There's nothing that backs it up. So what? what's the difference? There is no difference. The value is in the blockchain. So I really like, I, you know, for me, I, the, if the thing is establishments, institutions that we're trying to get from creative for true free market, because mm -hmm. you haven't lived in one of those and I don't know when, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right then what are we doing here miss me with all this noise about you know yeah, yeah you'll make the money in the difference right, right. you may I always tell people this right if you really look at our money system really what we're seeing is what we're seeing those that produce those are the players on the court where those that speculate on the players on the court make more money than the players on the court and those that speculate about those that speculate about players on the court make more so where are the producers right. who actually produces right and then gets paid for it so we don't live in that type of system right and because if, if we did third world and first world would be flipped <laughs> you know so so that's just my two cents there man that's just kind of how i kind of how i feel when i look at the situation because um i've been looking at this for a while and uh it's it's tricky it's tricky because i'm let me turn this over here to you chris let me let me let me let me nah. it down a little bit <laughs> Because you, you're making all the points, man. Like, that is it. And I think where we can kind of just pivot this a bit, because for everyone that's watching or listening, where you started this conversation could be, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to get over it. Don't worry. It, it'll it'll be done soon. Right? <laughs> got it. Got it. But, got it. <laughs> but, but either way. We rise up, baby. There we go. That's right. Could be. Hey, anyway, <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this, is, this is where we started the conversation was, like this new normal, how are these things going to change how we interact or how we view our in uh, ourselves or uh, people around us in these areas and our health, wealth, right? Love, happiness, relationships, those types of things. How is this new normal after on the, maybe we're on the tail end of this pandemic. I don't even know if we can call it a tail end, but where we're at right now. My right, hopes are up. Exactly. Right. There we go. At least we got that going. Right. At least basketball hoops are up. But we don't really know. And so this is just one area that we're diving deep on right now that we just had this conversation as far as how your wealth is going to change, how you're going to view money differently moving forward after this new normal, right? Like in, in this new normal or whatever it is, you're going to have to view things differently than what you had. One of the things I always talked about and it's funny because before we jumped on this you know and i love that we can just flow and i'm sure you guys like it too people that are listening because again this is just the real conversation if you were just listening in on us just talking anyway right yeah, um, we really but, didn't plan this <laughs> <laughs> we really didn't but it's, but but it's good that, that that we can go there and one of the things that we we're going to talk about beforehand was like the common myths Right, the myth bust, like kind of myths in in that wealth side, myths in the health side, myths myths in your relationship and things like that. But this kind of goes directly to some of those myths that like how things were done in the past with money is not how they will be done in the future. One of the things I always see when I sit down with clients and people that I know is they'll say something along the lines of, "Well, my dad told me, or my uncle told me," and I was like, "Hey, that's great, but you got to understand, like when your dad was like crushing it." He could get 13% in a CD at the bank, right? Like the house that he was going to buy was like, you know, $60,000, right? So like, that's great that like that model worked for him. But now we are stepping into a completely different realm with money and the old habits and the old mindset and the old tactics will not carry us through. And this is what we're talking about in digital currency. Right. Like there's so many people that shy away from digital currency and shy away from this crypto blockchain conversation. They think it's like one of those things like, you know, they keep everything super traditional. But at the end of the day, like follow the money, follow the money. When the biggest players in the institutional money game are buying Bitcoin and, you know, talking about blockchain, talking about other cryptos. And now you're seeing this thing happen. And just like Kabi said, Right, just like you said, you got me. <laughs> I got, I got you. Know? <laughs> just, <laughs> right, you made, you, made, you made me lose my point, bro. But like that's like <laughs> I got you, I got you on this. But yeah. but literally, like that's kind of what's what, what's going on. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I'm I'm, I'm this space now like a go. 
Well, if you have a segue, let me say this real quick and then I got you. Um, what I'm curious about if this is sounds like it's contradictory or not, but I don't I don't believe it is. <clears throat> For me, the way I feel is like when in doubt, go with the fundamentals, right? That's how I feel in health and whatever it is, right? Now, you know, let's say money, what are the fundamentals, right? For me, the fundamentals are real assets that's for me and you right. correct me bro again i'll, I'll give this I mean, after over to you you correct yeah. me if i'm wrong man but you I'll, know what's I'll never gone out of style huh. you know what's never gone out of style land you know what's never gone out of style gold you know what's <laughs> never gone out of style right real assets have never gone out of style i'm yeah. not saying you're gonna get rich necessarily off of that i'm not saying you're gonna break some multi-trillion dollar you know fictitious number because that's really what it is at the end of the day show me the trillion dollars where is it at right i don't see it <laughs> right numbers right? on the computer but, right but real assets you know where they are they're right there i can touch them mm -hmm. i can touch them so for me i kind of you know the way i feel personally is like when in doubt go with the proven fundamentals and the proven fundamentals at the end of the day you can always convert you know what I'm saying? Because you know, you know where somebody with a ton of cryptocurrency needs, they're still gonna need a place to live. That's right. They're gonna need water to drink. They're gonna mm -hmm. need food to eat. They're gonna need sunshine, right? They're gonna need a means of of bartering. They're gonna need a, uh, maybe not bartering, but of trading, right? Mm -hmm. And if that happens to be digital, great. If that happens to be paper fiat, great. If that happens to be freaking uh, turtle shells, great. Like whatever it is. But what is the real asset that's backing it up? And I feel the same way when it comes to um, health, right? So a lot of folks who come to me and say, hey man, like what about this keto thing? Or what about this? Or what about this new thing? Or whatever, whatever. Guess what has never changed? Nature's seven doctors have never changed. Ever, ever. You can go keto if you want. You can go carnivore if you want. You can go fruit if you want. You can go whatever. But the seven nature's doctors say exactly the same. So for me, they know in kind of my practice and how I look at it, I focus on the 20% that gets you 80% of the results. And if you're gonna play with the other 20, go right ahead. That's good, that's good, man. Stu, I know, jump in, man. I know you had, you had some stuff. Yeah, dude, I got a lot. You guys gave me a lot to, to chime in on here. <clears throat> I guess the first the first thing I really wanna talk about here is, um, you know, I was I was at a lunch, with a client yesterday and we were talking about pyramid structures and finance versus pyramid schemes. All right. Now the, the big, here's, here's, here's what I like about this. Like at the end of the day, whether we're talking about um, first to third world, whether we're talking about, you know, regulating the market, Bitcoin, Robinhood, whatever it is, the, the producers on the court, like at the end of the day, if you're at the, Quote, like the quote unquote bottom of the pyramid, you're doing more of the work and getting less of the money. The higher up you go, you are doing less of the work and you get more of the money. This happens in every single, not just money, this happens in every single hierarchy or in the planet, in the animal kingdom. It doesn't matter. If you're at the top, you do less of the producing. Now, inherently, that concept is not wrong, but where it shifts from pyramid. Because at some point, someone has to steer the ship, right? So, but where it shifts from pyramid to pyramid scheme is where the, where the intent is. Is it intended to lift people up? Is it intended to, as you, as you learn more about the system and you learn more about the, let's take a corporation. Let's take a corporation that has, I'm not going to give an example, but let's take a corporation that has tremendously positive intent in the world. Hey, we want to give you a job. Let's let, you know, pick, take your, you know, a, a stereotypical, hopefully non-corrupt nonprofit. Like you take one of those that has a great mission. It's trying to provide people with income while giving value to the world. At the end of the day, the people on the ground are doing the work and they're getting less of the money. The person at the top gets a pros like a portion percentage of all of those different incomes. And it trickles up that production trickles all the way up to him now. Now, every single small business starts off as one guy at the top of the pyramid and grows to a pyramid. So I bring all this up because a lot of what we've been talking about here is the old normal to the new, new normal. And I'm shedding light on this because 
some individuals took this pandemic and what happened with our elections, what happened with how we reacted to this, what happened to claims of real science and fake science and doctors standing up and saying certain things and getting silenced, talk about regulating social media. Like there's so much regulation going on that I think that so much happened in such a short period of time, they almost made it too obvious. So a lot of individuals out there that like me used to kind of go about their day and be like, hey, you know, I'm following the rules. I'm having a great time. Everything's going great. I'm checking all the boxes. All of a sudden you start to pay more attention because you're like, hold on a second. Something's off here. There's too many things happening that are pointing at the fact that there is some type of let's let's take all malintent out of it just for a moment. There's some type of regulation. Why? What the hell? I'm, a, I'm an adult. What, what is going on? Why are you regulating what I can consume? Could be your favorite, your favorite, your favorite thing to touch on. Why are you regulating what I consume? Why are you regulating where I can go? Why are you regulating any of this? I'm an adult. And by all of your socioeconomic, political, whatever standards, you know, I'm, I'm well educated. I, I, I produce for the economy. I pay my taxes like fuck off. So it really is. I think this year was eye opening for some people who had always kind of heard like what can be, I don't know, I hate to even use the term, but con like conspiracy theories because it's so charged and just a lot of people hear that term and probably even check out of here and fine. If you don't want to, if you don't want to open your mind up to the idea of those, then maybe this isn't the right program for you. But at the end of the day, I think there are a lot of people that utilize this year to figure out that, man, there's something off here. And then they started looking. And one of the one of the worst things you can do when you're trying to go anywhere from regulate behind the scenes to performing a magic trick is accidentally let somebody know like, hey, like a magic trick, you're supposed to be looking over here. Don't look at this hand. But as soon as they notice that the hand's doing something, now they're paying attention. So I'm really curious when it comes to this old normal versus the new normal with finances and trusting the money systems and trusting the political and the media and everything else out there, the norms, trusting the norms, trusting what we are told to believe in. I'm wondering if they did too much in too little of a time and put a chink in the armor of a lot of people's naivety. Absolutely. Absolutely. A hundred percent. I mean, the simple answer is yes, bro. And let me, let me, let me, you know, Chris, I'll pass it on to you right here. <clears throat> but, um, um, I, I, I think you, you, you make a great point when you speak to the intent, bro, because yes, you know, in, uh, in, uh, when you live in a group that has to be, uh, uh, eventually has to be one person who maybe is the uh, mediator or one person who is the, you know, quote unquote king or whatever. Right. But see the difference between, um, civilizations of old that were conquered by so-called conquered right because i say all this i'm a student in history guys my first love is history sue knows this uh if you know me uh, at any point my first love is history i study that like no other um and uh you know i, I i'm you're not gonna fool me man because i'll do my research all right so listen when you look at civilizations of old right let's say ancient egypt let's say all the civilizations of uh, West, West Africa, North Africa, uh, East Africa and Central Africa, Native Americans, right? What do you see? You don't see one giant freaking pyramid, right? You don't see that. What you see is communities that live up to, the, up to a certain level, right? And which is sustainable. Why is that important? All right, let's take, let, you might be more familiar with the Native Americans, right? Why is that important? It's important because the system doesn't get so big that now those, those that are supposed to be at the top who are supposed to be true leaders, AKA lead servant, right? They're the lead yeah. servants. They serve everybody yeah. else, not the bottom serves them, right? They serve everybody else. And speaking to the intent, it's the it's the it's the it's the uh, it's the uh, desire. These are usually the the healers. 
These are usually the mediators. These are usually the peacemakers. These are usually the ones who are looking out for everybody else's good. And you know what? So that they can do that, right? So that they can do that, uh, so that they can do that, the rest of the population chips in, what? 10% of what they make so that that person doesn't have to go work the fields and they could play that role of mediator. Where y'all think all that stuff comes from, right? So we completely lost that when we introduced greed from a completely different style, lifestyle, a way of living, where those at the top then say, I don't wanna work anymore. I don't wanna mediate anymore. I don't wanna, why am I doing this? I'm the one who's going between all these people. Why don't I start spreading lies? Why don't I start turning folks against each other? Why don't I start doing this? Why don't I start doing this? For what? To benefit me, right? That's to speak to your intent piece of it. And I say, when you study these civilizations, these, we call them civilizations, there's some bizarre, like whatever. I hate those terms anyway. But when you look at it, it, it it's important because what's happened now is that our top are so far from producing, so far from producing, they don't even know, they couldn't tell you a thing about growing a carrot, right? They couldn't tell you the first thing about how that food that they eat, right? That animal that they eat every single day, right? They couldn't tell you how that animal came to the table. So I bring this up because it ties directly to health. The further we move away from that, the further we move away from that way of living, the further we move away from our nature, literally our nature as humans, the further we move away from our nature, literally our connection to nature, the further we move towards consumerism, the more health issues arise, right? Simply removing our foot contact from the earth. Why? Oh, something could pierce this, da, da, da. Well, if you look at foots, literally foots of old, right? That wasn't a concern. Because <laughs> it was literally functioning differently, right? But now we soften it up, you know what I'm saying? Excuse my language here, but we soft this putty. I change it a little bit for you guys. We solve literally every generation that goes by when we think we're healthier, but we're not, right? We're basically being supported by machines. Hello, right? We're basically supported by machine as opposed to our system taking care of us. So then when we go and the CDC tells us all this nonsense that is blatant nonsense that if you know the first thing about biology, you got to sit back and be like, huh? You don't want me to breathe? You don't want me to get any sun? Wait, what? Why aren't you telling me to get my minerals up? Yeah. If this is if, if it's that big of a deal, if oh. the world is that that far gone and is that dangerous, bruh, everybody should be getting more sun. Everybody should be breathing more. Everybody should be moving more. Everybody should be eating better. Everybody should be moving a look. Like we should be doing all of these things. Why isn't the institution? Let me highlight that again. Why isn't the institution, one more time for the folks in the back, why isn't the institution that's supposed to be taking care and giving us our health not telling us any of this, but yet they tell us to what? Inject something into our arm, pop a pill. What? Bro, like this is not a, this not a, <laughs> this is common sense. This is common sense. But people are too far gone. Like that, that is in essence kind of what Stu was saying at the beginning. Most people are just walking around like, I got my job, I got my thing, I'm just here, right? A party, a hangout. And we're not using our brain. There's a quote that I don't remember who said it, but I know I've posted it once or twice that like thinking is the hardest thing for a man to do. No wonder why men don't think or something like that, right? Just meaning like people in general, right? Like actually using your brain and actually thinking like it takes like awareness. It takes like you have to pay attention. You have to you have to be locked in, right? So at, so at the end of the day, most of us and most people around are walking around like you said, Stu, in the matrix. Just right. <laughs> like just not anything. Anything's going on. My life is my life. But then. Like you said, I think that this past year opened the eyes 
of millions of people to understand like, huh, this doesn't actually make sense to me in so many different areas, in so many different areas. And some people chose to do different things with that information. Some people chose to be like, ah, well, it is what it is. And some people decided to press in, get more information, learn a little bit more, right? Like this time, I think, and I don't know, remember where I read this or saw this, but like vaccines was like one of the highly Googled words, like in you know the past like six months or something, like people are learning about vaccines, just vaccinations in general, just like- you're Wasting your time Googling it. But literally it's- it's Institution. It's, we understand these things, but people don't. So they have to start at whatever level that they're coming in or getting out of the matrix in, right? Like a lot of times, the level that sometimes we're talking in our respective areas is like people have cognitive dissonance, right? Like they're just, their belief system is so deep rooted, not knowing these things that when they hear information that doesn't support it, they actually can't grasp it. Like they, it doesn't make any sense. And they push against, this is what was happening with our, with the George Floyd situation and what was happening in all the racial, you know, injustice was like, there was just a group of white people in general that just like, they couldn't wrap their head around it. It was just because it was a little bit too far from what their actual belief system was. And that happens in all areas. That happens with people in their money when it comes to talking about things like cryptocurrency and the blockchain and you know digital wallets and all these types of things. At, like I was gonna take it back to what you said, Kabi. You <laughs> talked about like, <laughs> like assets being right, real assets being the basics, real assets, things that you can see that you know will, again, grow in value or will be able to cash flow you, real assets, things that you can hold on to. Here's the other side of it. Some people think that their home is an asset, like the, their, the house that they buy. Some people don't even know that like it's the bank's asset, right? It's, it's on their asset column. It's on your liabilities column, right? Like you pay the bank yep. for that house. So even the term until you asset. finally pay it off in 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. And even, even then, then, Stu, even then, Stu, you'd stop paying your taxes. Guess who takes it? That's right. Government comes in. Oh, you didn't pay your taxes on this house. You're never, it's, it's, the, it's never really going to be the thing, like the asset that you think it is. And again, this is terminology. So when we get back to basics, when we get back to the basics and money, when we get to, back to the basics and health, right? Little things like that. Some people are just too far in the matrix to really hear what we're saying. So everyone, what did happen though, back to Stu's point, what did happen is I think we got a step closer. Everyone that wasn't deep in the matrix, they got a step closer. They got two steps closer to be like, huh, this is, this is a little weird. Why, why are we doing this? And that's, I think, what will prove you know, this new normal, this, you know, how we're going to be able to adapt. It's when people get more aware, become more aware of the fact that they're in the matrix, that institutions run this thing, that, right, like bigger, like the powers that be, that's why we say that, right? The powers that be are the ones pulling the strings. And, you know, it ties into everything that, that, that we've been talking about. Yeah. Dude, the intent piece, I just want to hype on real quick. Like there could be, infinite number of possibilities behind the intent of all this regulation and control, right? The two big ones that always speak to my mind is one that could be touched on earlier, which is I'm looking out for me, you know, some other, I'm other people are producing and it's going to trickle its way up. So I don't have to produce. Um, that's one. The other is, and I'm, I'm doing it. Star Wars. Yeah. Have you guys both seen Star Wars? I'm not even a movie person, bro. So like, no, I haven't. And I know I have like a Star Oh, good. Star Wars. There we go. Okay, that's perfect. That's perfect. I'm going to ruin the whole movie for you right now. So, Star Wars was a giant satire at not even satire because it really wasn't for humor at all in any sense of the word, but it was <laughs> pointing out how the theoretically the dark side was going about their like they their entire motivation for controlling people and having them comply was because they believed that free choice and freedom was dangerous. They believed that that led to chaos, disruption, violence. And instead, 
they have everybody comply through fear tactics, which we 100% would see in things like Nazi Germany. And they would go about this. And that's why I love so much. All three of us have a passion for history. V and I and have talked about it quite a bit. He has dedicated quite a bit of time there. History is everything. And really where I'm going with this is the intent. I, I like to bring that up because it's so easy for us all. We all have our ideas. We all have our percentage-based assumptions of whether or not this is true it's like 90 percent true like who knows whatever like it's our best guess based on like how on earth could we possibly be not told like could be says and and chris says about the actual ways to be healthy why why are you giving us cures when you to to symptoms when you don't give us cures to root problems and i'm going in that direction because i want to point out that this has been pointed out that was in the 60s when that stuff came out and it was massive. And what's crazy is it was literally there as like a, hey, we're allowed to get away with this because at first glance, this is fantasy. But if you look at the deeper meaning, this is what we're trying to tell you is happening. Big Brother is taking over because some individuals think that the masses should be controlled because otherwise chaos ensues. So to me, I find that very interesting because I feel like each generation like learns this. And with the Internet, maybe we're able to learn it at a younger age. I think with our with certain types of nurtures that we go through. I think the three of us had very like good nurtures that either helped us in some way, whether it was more self-made or, or the parents or whatever. And man, all of that, I think the intent piece is key for understanding how to fix it. But also I want to highlight, and I know we're, we got to wrap up soon. I want to highlight how right now a lot of history is being deleted. A lot of like Dr. Seuss books, a lot of old cartoons. Yeah, what's up what with this Dr. Seuss thing, bro? Like I've heard that too, but I haven't dived. I haven't. Dude, dived I think this should be our clubhouse topic, man, because I could go on about this. I could. Go Maybe on. we should. Maybe we should go in the clubhouse. And You're talk deleting about history. Listen, before we go that, before we go down that route. Um, They've been delete in history for for a very long time, guys. That's also very true. Let's, That's let's, also let's very not, true. Let's, let's, come on now, you know what I mean? Oh, so yeah. let's no, go no, all, no, all, not saying it's new. all not saying the it's way new. back from. Uh, I, I know you're not. I'm I'm saying this for the general general yeah. um, general general public here. Word. Um, but it, it, it's um, let's go all the way back from the 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 the, the theft. Of of, of 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 Egypt, right? I mean, let's go back from the. Uh, I mean, we completely wiped out. I mean, those those who are native to this land, man. Let's I, like this has been going on for a really really long time. So, um, listen, I I think I think um, in terms of intent, man. What I what I want to say, and, and then you guys can can give your closing thoughts to to wrap up this segment before we move over to Clubhouse. Go ahead and join us in Clubhouse. Um, is my what I realized and what came up for me in 2020 is that um, there's a role to play here. And for me, it starts with help. There's a lot of people chasing money, money out here. Uh, money is just uh, 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 is like second, third degree to energy. Right. So what I mean by that is, is, is simply I mean, money, as we know it now, was simply just a, a paper representation of gold that was in the vault. Right. And the gold is it, dubious whether the gold is even in the vault anymore. Right. So we, we, we don't even know. Right. Uh, but everybody's chasing money. Right. Got it. There's nothing wrong with that. I want to say that clearly. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. And I don't think there's anything to be fixed necessarily. Right. I think it's time for individuals to take responsibility, 100% responsibility for themselves and their family units. Okay. So what I say by I, what I mean by that is, listen, the, the 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 pay attention to the number seven. Okay. We could go into numerology for days and whatnot, but there's seven um, doctors of nature. There's also seven primary needs. There's seven sins. Right. So when you look at your health, right, which starts, I say we start from that because it literally impacts how we think, right? We've been kind of uh, indoctrinated to believe that thinking is higher than feeling. I disagree, right? I totally disagree. Um, why? Because I believe that we are born whole and complete, okay? 
And when we are in tune with ourselves, we're actually all connected. So when you're in tune with yourself, let me tell you the experience. When I came off uh, uh, my juice feast or fruit feast, both of them actually, I, there's no way you pick up a gun and shoot somebody. There's no way. You, th there's, the thought wouldn't even cross your mind because of the state and the vibration and frequency of which you're vibrating at. But see, when you fill your body with dense metals, with dense food, with toxic air, with uh, poor movement, with terrible polluted water, and you don't laugh and you don't rest because you're out here chasing what? Paper, right? You're not a better person. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're not. Right. I'm not a better person. Right. I know the thoughts that go through my head when those things occur. Right. And I know the thoughts that go through my head when I move towards high by high frequency foods that we're meant to eat. Why do you think it's so in, it's so incredibly important for uh, that? He who shall not be named to continue to buy farmland all across the world and control our food supply. And then fund literally our entire research and medical system that is encouraging us to go inject ourselves with liquid, with, with, with unknown substances in the hopes of getting healthy. When I could tell you right now, my friend, that getting healthy has to do with sun, air, exercise, in terms of movement. I'm not talking about lifting weights to the gym, right? I'm talking about breath, right? water that we consume that's not toxic, uh, food that we consume at high frequencies, and laughter with our fellow people. Why do we sit in AP Bio or whatever it is, wherever you got this information from, and it tells you that literally everything on this earth and beyond is connected, literally. No, I'm not talking like, oh, connected in some fictitious way, but matter is all the same, right? So. We really gotta, you know, and, and I hope I'm not speaking to a much like, you know, too, going over too many people's head. If it is, hit me up, follow me, you already know what it is. Um, but we've been indoctrinated to think, oh yeah, you know, thinking about literature and all this not, like stuff is just like so much better. But I'm here to tell you that brain gut connection and feeling, cleaning that up, cleaning your gut so that, and cleaning the pus out of your head, literally, and allowing you to vibrate a higher frequency will lead to a better world. No question about it, why? Because it's real, real hard, man, to not have love for living things. It's real, real hard to not have love for your brothers and sisters. It's real, real hard to not look and say, man, that person is suffering. Let me go give them a shirt off my back, right? When you're, when you're out here kind of, kind of following these things and it goes in this order, all right? If you're taking notes, take this down. If you go, if you're taking notes, take this down. It goes first and foremost, breath. Second, hydration. Third, sleep. I don't know what just happened, but third, sleep. Uh, fourth, food that you're consuming. Fifth, love. Sixth, growth. And seventh, movement. If we focus on that, if the CDC would teach that, if these institutions would teach that, <laughs> we won't need to figure out all this stuff about who has atomic bombs and this, that, and the third and all this stuff, right? It wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen. And if you don't believe me, sign up for my solid food vacation and I'll help you get through it. And you go ahead and see how you felt before and how you feel at the end of it. And the truth, I'll be clear to you. Mike drop, way to close this out. That was it. Again, you guys heard it. Everyone that's listening, watching, like you understand one, how passionate could be is about his about his health and about our health and about the ways that we've been lied to. And that's what we're about to jump into Clubhouse. Could be, I want you to jump into Clubhouse and I want you to start the conversation right there. Everyone that's watching and listening right now, join us in Clubhouse. We're jumping over there right now. We're gonna continue the conversation. See this you in Clubhouse. Time. This is the time we're gonna you're gonna get a chance to engage with us if you want to, but join us over there on Clubhouse right now. For everyone that joined us this week, thank you so much. We we appreciate it. We went live on IG. So IG, thank you so much. Also, we're gonna do this every Thursday. It looks like it's it's gonna work out this way. And we're gonna catch you guys next week for another episode of The Good Life. We love you guys. Take care.